journey through the Triglav National Park begins on the northern edge of the triangular border of Slovenia, Italy and Austria, in Kranskia Gora. This, the best known and most well-equipped ski resort in Slovenia, is growing in popularity each year, including the summer months. Surrounded by the Julian Alps and Caravanke, man-made landmarks fade into insignificance when faced with natural, unadulterated nature. In the center, the late Gothic Church of St. Mary is an historical site situated on an old trade route that travels across the Wurzen Pass. In the 11th century, this village was founded by the Corinthian people, and the village center, including its old farmhouses, has been well preserved. It attracts walkers and climbers, and for fortune seekers, there are casinos. The magnificent mountain scenery attracts countless visitors, and our exploration of the park can begin. The first mountain massifs of the Julian Alps reflect in the small Lake Janza, which lies just beyond Kreanske Gora, en route to the Vrishic Pass. The high-rising Slovenian Alps are one of the most little-known, yet most beautiful alpine regions of Europe. mysterious, unspoiled landscape. The realm of Zlatrog, a goat with golden horns. In the First World War, Russian prisoners of war built a supply road for the K and K army. This Russian church, a melancholy reminder of those harsh days. It took some years to construct the road. Many died of cold, hunger and exhaustion, or were killed by avalanche. There are 25 sharp bends on this mountain road that travels to the 1,611 meter high Vrishic Pass. Przonczyk and Mostrovka rise abruptly into the sky above. The route is now open to the full splendor of the Triglav Narodny Park with its magnificent mountain landscape. Here visitors stop and look at local souvenirs. But soon it's the scenery that takes control. A wild, natural paradise reminiscent of an enchanted world. A unique mountain landscape of outstanding beauty. However, in the First World War, this natural wonder witnessed stark terror when it was the scene of the world's largest mountain battle. Here, on the Asonso front, hundreds of thousands of soldiers lost their lives. On a slope that leads down to the Trenta Valley is a monument that commemorates mountaineer and writer Dr. Julius Kugi, who discovered both this location and the Julian Alps.
For several years, Dr. Kuhi recorded the region's flora and climbed each of the major peaks of the Julian Alps. The Trento Valley is the source of one of the most beautiful rivers in the Alps. It flows from a mountain cave that has an underground lake. Like magic, a tiny torrent of water rushes out of a cave like a waterfall across outlying boulders. It is the source of something much larger. The crystal clear water incessantly finds its way across the rocky slopes of the narrow canyon, which eventually opens up into the Trenta Valley. In this natural paradise, Europe's wildest and most romantic river is born. The Socha, the Emerald River. This, one of the last untamed rivers in the Alps, is named Socha and later Isonzo. To Socha also belong the mighty mountains through which the river carves its path. Geologically, the landscape of the upper Socha is relatively young and rugged, with deep cut valleys and few flat areas. Its characteristic appearance was formed by the action of a glacier, and water erosion formed a valley. Again and again, the Socha changes both its course and its shape. On the left shore is a botanical garden that was planted in the 1920s, the Arboretum Alpinum Juliana. This splendid show garden features the diversity of vegetation that is to be found in the Slovenian Alps. The indigenous flora which first caught the attention of Dr. Kugi was planted here by Albert de Boischen and his colleagues. Juliana is the only alpine garden in Slovenia. Close to the garden, are several old farmhouses and the small church of the Holy Lady of Loreto, whose interior radiates rustic grandeur. In the cottage garden, blossoming wildflowers attract many insects. Picture book perfect. The road travels alongside the powerful Socha that makes its way through the Trenta Valley. Various bridges allow the region's few farmers to cross the river, whose character can change dramatically according to the weather. Suddenly, a whitewater rafting camp appears.
From the nearby town of Bovec, a cable car ascends the canyon. It's 2,587 meters high and easily accessible via a climbing aid, taking around three hours. Until late spring, there is snow in this, the highest ski area in Slovenia. And then the scree slopes become visible. Along with the park's karst and limestone landscape with its bare mountain slopes and bizarre rock formations. Near Bovec, the Karitnica Valley begins and ascends to Italy's Paso del Predo. A tranquil valley end with wonderful views and a few small villages which are romantic in summer, but that can be treacherous in winter. Seclusion like this is something you need to be born into. A world of gigantic mountains and long winter months. These factors unite village communities and create lifetime bonds. in sunny summers and savage winters. The Cloutier Fortress surveys the entrance to the valley. Defiantly guarding the route from the Koritnika Gorge to the nearby town of Bovec. In 1881, Klaus Fritscher had this wooden fortress rebuilt in stone. Its original military use was replaced by a museum featuring many local discoveries and historical records. Memories of a glorious but distant past. The route continues along the Sulcher to the south. Here, fertile, dark green forests flank a quieter section of the Alpine River. In Trinovo, the river flows into a narrow white water gorge and large chunks of rock, the result of various earthquakes, lie on the riverbed. primitive, wild cast landscape. It's ideal for all kinds of white water sports, including rafting and kayaking. Enthusiasts come from all over the world to enjoy its various challenges. The small town of Koborid lies picturesquely on the west bank of the Socha. Here the transition from Alpine to Mediterranean is finally complete. A tiny hillside church with a monumental ossuary is a reminder of a gruesome battle of the First World War when thousands of soldiers lost their lives here.
From the Napoleon Bridge, there's a fine view of the 100 meter deep wilds such as Cobarid Gorge. A hazardous section which kayakers fear and that is considered to be impossible. A magical world, a canyon whose wild beauty is captivating. After the Cobarid Gorge, the valley widens and the Socha changes its character. It has now lost the power it had in the higher regions and flows more calmly. At Tolmin, a bridge crosses the wide river, the banks of which are formed by gravel. Many tributaries feed the Socha. Along with the Tolminka River, whose 60 meter deep gorge can be seen from the Devil's Bridge. On a trail through the gorge are a variety of plants and insects, which Dr. Julius Kugi once recorded in meticulous detail. Ferns and mosses, bizarre formations, the play of light and shadow, and the fury of the water, each combine to great dramatic effect. It's believed that famous Italian poet Dante Alighieri once visited the Tolimca canyons while staying in Tolmen. that the locality inspired his vision of the underworld in his Divina Commedia. Close to the source of the Tolminka River and above the village of Yavorka is a peaceful alpine landscape with grazing livestock. middle of an alpine meadow is the small church of Svatidu with its wide stone steps. In 1916, Austrian soldiers created its sacred artwork in the style of the Vienna Secession. The colorful blue-colored wooden pillars of its interior are decorated with numerous ornaments. Each of the decorations displays its origin, and the wooden sections were created in the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. Glass cabinets display the memorabilia of the war years and of the dead. an extraordinary record of war. We return to the north and visit the Vrata Valley, one of the most beautiful glacial valleys in the Alps. It opens up about 12 kilometers east of Kranskia Gora, to the Sava Valley, forested and untouched, 10 kilometers long. The deep gorged Bistricha River accompanies it into the valley. Midway, an impressive waterfall plunges 52 meters to the depths below. Yeah. 
The Slaprichnik is one of Slovenia's many national parks and demonstrates the awesome power of water. Most of the water that falls as rain or snow is soaked up by the porous rock. The water appears elsewhere as a waterfall or the source of a stream or river. Around 25 million years ago, the huge Julian Alps formed the banks of the Pannonian Sea. During the Ice Age, the wooded valleys of today were the foothills of various glaciers. Almost at the end of the Frato Valley, at the Aljasia of Dom mountain hut, there's a tiny chapel for mountaineers. This is also a well-known vantage point of the 1500 meter towering north wall of the Triglav Massif. At the entrance to the valley in July 2010, the Slovenia Alps Museum was inaugurated in Mostranja. It features the history of the Slovenian mountains. To experience the romance of the railways of bygone times is always a pleasure, and this is no exception. So welcome aboard. Our journey begins in Jesenice. Each summer, an historic steam train travels through the Triglav National Park and both the Bacha and Socha valleys to Novogorica. An interesting journey on a slow train through a green and fertile landscape. We arrive at our first stop. An extended stay is announced, and in the style of the old imperial epoch, various characters strolled along the platforms. The train station is situated above a hollowed out glacier that later became Bled Lake, one of the warmest lakes in the Alps. In 1858, Arnold Rickley, a Swiss doctor, built a spa hotel here, and this health resort was born. An island with a church and a castle on the rocks of the northern shore are renowned photo motifs. The oldest buildings of Blieski Grad Castle date back to the late Middle Ages. Its commercial and residential buildings are mostly from the Baroque period. The lower courtyard leads to the upper courtyard in which once noblemen lived. In 1004 AD, a defensive tower stood here, which subsequently became part of the castle. In the upper residential building, there's a museum. And its Gothic chapel is dedicated to the saints Albuin and Ingenuin, and is decorated with frescoes which were added in the 18th century. In wooden Pletnia boats, boatmen row to the island. 
99 steps lead up from the landing point to the Church of Mary. It's believed that those who ring the wishing bell in the Pilgrim Church will have their dreams come true. With such positive thoughts, we return to the mainland. The trip to the romantic Blieski Otok proves to be a success. West of Bled are the Pokliuka Mountains, nestling within a densely wooded landscape that resembles primeval forests. A winding road ascends 22 kilometers to the Pokliuka Plateau, where it ends at Rudnoporje. Here at 1,250 meters above sea level, mainly grow spruces and it's about 10 degrees cooler than down in Bled. Ideal for walking, cycling and in winter cross-country skiing and taking in the pleasures of unspoiled nature. The engines fire into life once again. The Bohinch Museum train continues its journey, triumphant, steaming and rattling, heading for the next valley. The route now runs through a valley which borders the Triglav National Park, with small villages and stations along the way. The Bohinch, as this region is named, was once known for its hammer mills. But in the 19th century, the ore deposits ran out. An iron foundry, timber and charcoal production were the main sources of income in this remote and often severe environment. The nostalgic train rumbles slowly into the next. Bohinchkyom Bistrika, the region's dreamy main center. In Bohinch Valley, the lake is the main attraction, emerald green and crystal clear. The four kilometre long and up to 45 metre deep Bohinskio Zizero is a huge basin surrounded by splendid mountains. The largest lake in Slovenia and all of its fine natural scenery is protected due to it being located within the Triklav National Park. The small village of Ripchev Lanz is situated on the outflow of the lake where the banks are undeveloped and allow visitors free access. It's a scenic idyll that is not even disturbed by the lake's only electric powered tour boat as it slowly moves on the water. The age of a church dedicated to John the Baptist is easily discernible. Romanesque art of the 14th century. The interior is richly decorated with frescoes that date back to a later period. The presbytery is adorned with a cross-ribbed vault and the paintings are multi-layered. From the other end of Lake Bohinch, a cable car transports both passengers and goods up Vogel Mountain and to a mountain station at a dizzy altitude. 
In fine weather, the panoramic view from here is breathtaking. The lake, Triglav and the Julian Alps. A popular ski resort in winter, in summer it's very popular with walkers who venture into the high mountain areas. And there are ski hotels, ski lifts and chalets. By cable car, the plateau is easily reached at 1,537 meters above sea level and from where the mountain peak can be reached along with well-marked trails. The limestone mountains of the Triglav National Park are a national treasure, a majestic sight. At the southern end of Lake Bohinch is a somewhat demanding climb to the Ceviche waterfall. The water of the Ceviche flows into a creek between huge rocks and then flows towards the lake. Five hundred and fifty-five steep steps lead through a forest and up a mountain slope. There is a shortcut where the wild water has cut its own path. The forest is fragrant and a small wooden pavilion appears to block the steps, the end to our arduous ascent. What a sight! The Savicha waterfall in all its glory. The water plunges down about 60 meters into an emerald green basin below. It's believed to be more than a thousand years since the last Prince of Slovenia was baptized here. Here too starts the long ascent to the high valley of the Seven Lakes, a unique experience of nature though with much challenging terrain. After several hours of climbing, Bohinskio Lake lies way down below and the first glacial lake appears. The view opens up more and more on the bare mountains as the tree line disappears below and the wonderful alpine flora adorns the alpine landscape. Many of these remarkable alpine flowers are endemic and can only be found here in the high mountains. The tranquility and beauty of nature reveals a hidden wonderland, a veritable mountain paradise. Each perspective on the Twin Lake possesses its own charm, and the reflections on the smooth surface of the water is fine reward for the arduous climb. On the lakeside at the foot of Belaglava is a very welcome mountain hut that offers a good night's lodging with food and drink. From here the narrow valley ascends to the high mountains between scree slopes, steep cliffs and occasional trees. Rain and ice have cut deep fissures into the porous cast rock into which any surface water enters. Mm -hmm. 
Next we arrive at the fourth lake. Well disguised among tall cliffs, the water reflects the radiant mountains. Even at this altitude, between rocks and scree, flowers still blossom in all their alpine splendor. We continue our ascent. Paths are replaced by irregular natural rock. And again, another small lake, the fifth. In late summer, the water level is much reduced and the lakes are transformed into tarns. Two thousand meters above sea level, there are few alpine flowers. And from its sheltered basin, the sixth lake glows bright green. The seventh and final lake is best seen from the mountain hut on the crest. Up here, the oldest part of the Alpine Triglavli Park ends. Back in the valley near Lake Bohinch, is the park's cultural landscape, an experiment that seems to be a success. The tranquil village of Stara Fuzinia is situated on the gentle and sun-blessed slopes of the Triglav Mountains. Here, both agriculture and nature conservation are closely related, and the farms have been preserved in all their past glory. An alpine dairy museum is housed within a former cheese dairy. depicts the humble lifestyle of the mountain pastures as well as various cheese making equipment. Cheese was produced on this farm until 1967. The so-called cheese wheels were carried down from the mountain pastures each week by several carriers and then stored to maturity. The neighboring village of Studo is known for its kozolci, covered wooden frames used for drying hay. Vegetables are grown here, and each farm has its own flower and vegetable gardens. This 19th century farmhouse also became a museum. Opland House was inhabited until 1974. Various working devices are featured in the living room, barn and kitchen. Harsh living conditions outside, but a cosy atmosphere was created within the farmhouse. farm life of 200 centuries ago. The 
The train leaves Bohinsko Bistrika station and travels through the six kilometer long Kolba tunnel and passes Podbredo. Now, the southern side of the Julian Alps. When the train travels across the long bridge at Grahovo, it's a splendid sight. The train most certainly being the star of the show. This railway line, once called the Karavankan Vochheiner train, was built between 1900 and 1905 during Austro-Hungarian rule. For that time, it was a unique technical achievement with 42 tunnels, 62 bridges and three galleries. At the open end of the valley at Baja Primo Dresu, a semicircular stone bridge leads into the Socha River Valley. The train gradually approaches the next station, which is located just outside the village. Mosnasochi, a quiet and well-located village with a long history that dates back to prehistoric times. It is a strategic location at the junction of the rivers Socha and Idritsha, which attracted settlers to this area in both the Bronze and Iron Ages. Although the heyday of railway tourism is long gone, nostalgic journeys such as this make it live on. A small Mississippi-type steamer travels at leisurely pace on the artificial lake and along the short section of the Socha. The Triglav National Park impresses with its beautiful, contrasting scenery, bare mountains, deep valleys, wild water and nature. Blossoming alpine flowers, high mountains and white water sports in the canyons along the Emerald River. Breathtaking waterfalls, glacial lakes with tourist areas, fortresses and idyllic plateaus. as well as untouched high mountain valleys with enchanting endemic flora. A natural paradise in the heart of Europe.